Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today I'm gonna to show you one of my many weekend projects that took much longer than a weekend. bought maple, had somebody else plane and joint the side. So now we can glue them together. We are adding dowels now to get a little bit of structural integrity, but also just to help keep the boards aligned so that we don't have to sand off too much extra here. Got this cool doweling jig that'll take a half inch dowel. And we're just, we've been drilling through the wood. So all we've been doing is clamping the wood down in an opposing fashion. We were finding it was tipping if we put both the clamps on the same side. And then the doweling jig here, we select our uh, one half measurement. And there's a little line here for the middle of the hole. And we just try to line it up. That seems about right there. And then I've been trying to like brace and clamp down. Both of these silver sides will come in at the same time. We're near the limit of thickness that this jig will take, um, but it seems to be working really well. After that, we stuck our half inch dowels in our half inch holes. It aligned pretty well, though the, the dowels were kind of loose in there. Uh, we just put a bunch of Type Bond 3 glue in, clamped everything together and left it overnight. Uh, the, it was very sturdy, definitely, but it wasn't quite level. Uh, where the seams, where the woods were coming together, it wasn't, even though they're the same thickness, there was still some bowing. You could see some cupping in this image here. So we filled our knot holes and then <laughs> spent a lot of time doing some sanding. Okay, here's an update where, <laughs> oh my God, maybe a month and a half into the project. It took a lot of sanding, um, but it is baby's bottom smooth right now. Now we're gonna put these steel C channels in this thing and I needed to carve out a recess for it. So it's C-shape, it's gotta be deeper on the sides. All I did was I set up our clamp straight edge and then just pushed it through. Next step is to take out, I think it's about a quarter inch. We're gonna double check before we do it, but all of this needs to come out. We modeled this table build off of a YouTube video from Walker's Woodworks, um, and he recommended buying these C-channels and Rampa inserts from a company called Bidwell Wood Company. Uh, so we picked those up. The C-channel's great. It's super finished. It doesn't make me feel like it's gonna rust, you know? And then the inserts, what you do is you epoxy it into the wood, and that way you can use an Allen screw to screw the C-channel into the wood. With the surface prepped, we decided to start finishing, which that's a long story that you'll hear more of soon. Uh, we picked the General Finishes water-based polyurethane top coat and in the satin finish. I wanted something more matte, but I, I didn't have that available to me at the store, and so I went with the satin and ended up kind of liking it. All right. So we got this beautiful desk. It's still not done. <laughs> we've been working on it for months. The problem is we've never done this before. We've had to redo a lot of things, uh, namely the finish. So the finish was drying too quickly. We were using water-based polyurethane and it was drying too quickly. It started to bubble, like it was literally boiling. Um, so what we have to do now is sand off what we've put on already. And then we're gonna re-put on the right stuff, but inside. So we gotta move the table inside and we gotta sand between coats. And Allison's not gonna let me sand in the kitchen. So I gotta move it in, move it out, move it in, move it out. Uh, let's get sanding. I 
It's not done, but I don't know if I can take it anymore. It looks pretty good though. It's nice and flat. Yeah. I'm just worried that when I seal it, that it's gonna be, um, how do we say, inconsistent. Like part will be nice and flat and shiny and part will be pretty flat but scratchy. But this is the underside of the table and we've been working on it for months. So I just, it might be good enough at this point. We decided it was indeed good enough uh, and moved the table back in to restart the finishing process. There had been a lot of sanding to remove the, the coats of that water-based polyurethane we had already put on. It turned out to be really important to finish it inside because of temperature and humidity. Uh, and it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough and it was the underside of the table. So after installing the C-channels, we flipped it and continued. All right, so exciting developments. We feel like the undersurface is done. There are, so I put the, the finish on with a foam brush and there are some obvious like overlapping lines that I was under the impression would flatten out. But what I think happened is since the table is so long, it takes a really long time to go all the way down to apply it all. Like I'm trying to do it quick, but it starts to dry in minutes, literally. And I think we got some of it drying and then the next layer, like layers on top of that. And so that's why it doesn't look like one even coat. So what I think we can do is get some sort of finish extender, bring out the, the drying time a little bit. We're so close to finishing that I don't want to experiment on a test piece of wood. Uh, but I might be running to the store, still trying to figure that out. But next steps are we got to finish the top. Uh, so we can still prepare the wood. We have a couple holes here that need to be filled. There's a little bit there, pretty tiny. A little bit there, pretty tiny. A little bit there, pretty tiny. And then this chip in the end is our biggest deal. And then I've got some, uh, feels like the glue is kind of like sticking out now. Um, so I do want to go over the whole thing one more time sanding since this is going to be the top and I don't want it to be too not flat because that would be sad. To fill the holes, we are going to use some of the sawdust from the orbital sander. We're going to put it in a cup and we're going to mix it with some of our glue. This is just the, the wood glue type on three that we used to put the pieces together. Um, you can use epoxy. There's a bunch of really good YouTube descriptions of like comparisons of what they all look like. Seemed to work fine on the other side, so we're just gonna go for it. You can buy wood filler at the store if that's what you prefer, but I I like the idea of putting the sawdust back in. It seems really green to me. Uh, I don't have a scientific process for mixing all of this. I just kind of like put some sawdust in there, put some glue in there, and went until it felt like a good consistency that I could put into the table. Big goal here is trying to fill the cracks, kind of pushing it into the cracks. The glue does change the color a bit, so make sure you practice on a test piece first. I'm a little upset I don't have footage of me routing the C-channels from the undersurface of the table, but this was my first project using a router, and this thing is a beast. It's really scary, really loud, really fast. Uh, so after doing all of that, I was a little more comfortable with it. Here is me doing the trim with, I believe it was a 16th of an inch roundover bit. After that, we brought the table back inside to start doing some finishing. It was definitely different not having the cutouts from the uh, C-channel there. Uh, kind of easier to apply, but now I had to get the edges, and that was that was difficult. This first one actually didn't feel too bad because the wood really soaked up the finish, but after that, uh, I got a lot of dripping. It felt like I was putting on too much. I ran into a small issue sanding after the second coat because it wasn't quite dry. So I was a little worried going into the third application, but after the third one, it actually looked really good. And I was, I was surprised, but I was really happy to say, you know what, I think we can call this done. Now, the last important decision is what kind of legs are you gonna put it on? 
Allison and I talked about this a lot, and she she really didn't want it to look like an office desk. Like, it didn't want it to feel like an office space. But Uplift offers a four-leg adjustable sit-to-stand desk that you can put on casters. I have one in my office, and I just, I really liked it. Uh, so we compromised, and that kind of looks a little bit like a kitchen table. Uh, so I put it all together, drilled my holes, and attached the desk. Now, it's not cheap. It's going to be at least about $1,000, I would say. Uh, and it took me a long time to work up the courage to spend all of that because they did not sponsor me. <laughs> but I am really happy with it. I'm, I'm glad we got it. It's It does everything that we both wanted. Um, and now we have a nice 72 by 30 inch space where we can do work in the kitchen. Looking back, it definitely took longer than maybe it should have, but we wanted to go slow. We hadn't done a woodworking project since high school and we wanted it to be good. We wanted it to be something that would last really long and we'd be happy with. And I can safely say that we achieved that. So I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. It is the the wood, uh, we knew when we bought it, but the wood is beautiful. I managed to not mess it up. Um, I learned how to fill cracks. I learned how to glue boards together. I learned <laughs> the importance of everything being flat. I learned how long sanding really takes. Uh, I experimented even with finishing and how long it takes to sand off finish. And sometimes that finish will come off <laughs> into your sandpaper and pretty much nullify your sandpaper. It gets really gummy and it doesn't work very well. I'm super excited with how this table turned out. Um, I hope you guys liked it. If you did like this video and you wanna build maybe a table on your own, leave a comment below. Tell me what kind of wood you're gonna pick. What kind of legs are you gonna to choose too? That's like a big question. For me, it was a no brainer. I should overspend on the Uplift four leg uh, frame. They did not sponsor this video. I bought that all with my money, but I have two other ones and I just really like them. Like they, they work really well and they're the only ones that have four legs and will adjust height. And ergonomics are important, but also appearances are important, right? If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I release new videos. Normally those are on fitness, but I do like to dabble in other things. So I had to release this one on this table and I'll see you all in the next one.